Rats. The power is out. I have been trying to contact my insurance agent since November. She doesn't answer my calls. So I decided I am going over there to hunt her down like the dog that she is. I am sick of taking the bus. Drat you, Sandy, for destroying my car. Shit. Lola, are you in there? It's Tony Citizen. I have been trying to call you for months. Eee, no, no, it's only cleaning lady. It's Lola, she go home. Go on vacation, no coming back. I don't believe you. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. I know you are, in there. I can hear you saying shit. Shit. Fine. May as well get this over with. Come in. Why the hell have you been avoiding me? Why does it look different in here? Did you buy all new stuff with all the commissions you get from ripping people off? No you shithead. My office flooded in Sandy. All my stuff was ruined. I had to buy cheap shit stuff from Ikea and Big Lots to refurnish my office. At first, I didn't answer calls because I had no power. Then I stopped picking up the phone because everyone wants to kill me. Why don't you pop a squad in that beanbag chair behind you, so we can discuss how you'd like to kill me too. Hey, this is unusually comfortable. I know, isn't it? What the hell? Your plant just tried to eat me. Down Seymour. Yes, he does that. He's an attack plant. I couldn't afford to replace my alarm system. He seemed like an economic solution. So how would you like to kill me? Would you like to string me up upside down by my high heels and smack me with a stick like a piñata until my entrails fall out? The last guy who was in here said that. I figured I'd spare you from expending your creative energy by sharing that with you. How very generous of you. If only you were this helpful when you sold me my flood policy. You said I was covered, and my house is destroyed and they won't pay to fix it. That means I was not covered. You lied to me. Listen, I'm not the one who lied. They lied. The NFIP lied to me too. They told me my whole office was a basement and didn't pay my claim. But it's your job to know how this works. Unfortunately most brokers who haven't had to deal with a flood before learn the hard way. Like I did. I think you were in on it. I assure you that's not the case. Really? Her name was Lola. She was a broker. She sold flood insurance and she swear. I was covered over there. She took my money and sent a dead page. And while she said I was all set, if I floated into the bed, Sam, he drowned my house and ruined my whole life. The NFIP adjuster denied my claim. I need to ask for more. Where is Lo? La? My insurance broke. Kurt, she said that I was fully covered. Where is Lola? My friendly pal agent. No one is paying my claim. Who do I blame? I blame Lo. La. She is a schmuck. His name was Tony. He needed coverage. He called up the pal agency and met with me over there. And when I finished, like every sucker, I thought it would be fine. No, this one sounds daunting one and a half the time. But that's sad. Taking a claims word actually made. Now, everyone is pissed at me because FEMA doesn't pay. Damn it, Lola. This really sucks. Oh yes, I know. What the hell am I supposed to do now? You must get an ST, mate, and then file a supply, mint, and you must file a proof of loss. A what of what? A proof of loss. What the hell are you talking about? 
a proof of loss is an official document stating the entire financial value of your claim. Your adjuster fills out a proof of loss when he pays your claim. If you don't agree with what he documents as your losses, you must fill out your own proof of loss, which documents whatever losses he determined along with any additional losses. You and your contractor calculate. It is a picture of the entire claim, who is covered, what the coverage amounts are, what the cause of loss is, and what you determine to be the entire value of the loss against your coverage amount. If you don't file this, the insurance company can deny you for non-compliance. Normally you have 60 days to prepare this document and submit it to the NFIP. 60 days. I have been trying for over 6 months to get someone to give me a comprehensive estimate of my damages with no luck. How could I possibly fill this out in 60 days? You did not let me finish. For Sandy, they extended the deadline to a year. Oh thank God, that should be plenty of time. One would hope so. You can get the forms for the proof of loss from the FEMA website. But I suggest you get help filling it out because if you fill it out wrong they can reject it and say you never were compliant with the requirement. So let me get this straight. I had $350,000 of coverage. You can look at my house and see it was totally destroyed in the flood. But they can deny my entire claim because they don't like the way I filled out a piece of paper. Exactly. But a piece of paper doesn't make my damages any less extensive, nor does it make them any less responsible for paying properly. Um, well, that's how it works. You should probably get a public adjuster or a lawyer to help you. There are free legal clinics around that can tell you more information about this. I tried to get a public adjuster. One didn't want my case because he said he can't do anything about the basement issue. The other wanted 12% of whatever insurance pays, including what insurance already paid me. That means if I signed with him, I would already owe him over $600 for not doing anything. So where is his incentive to do anything? Yeah, well, I wouldn't hire that guy. No one else I called returned my calls. I don't know what to think. I don't know why this is so hard. I shouldn't have to hire someone and pay them part of my claim. I need all the money I can get to fix my house. Listen, if there's anything I can do to help you, I am happy to do it. I just don't know what I can do. These decisions not to pay people are bigger than me. Well, can you help me figure out their rules, to see if there's something they should have covered but they didn't? Are you kidding? That sounds like a lot of work. What do you think I am? A volunteer? This is a business. You ask for a policy and I provide that to you, that's where my role starts, and where it ends. Just remember to hate the game, not the player. I don't make the rules. Well, your role is a big disappointment. The word agent implies that you represent me. Well, I do represent you when you need to buy stuff. And you do need to buy stuff. So, while you are here, we should go over your flood insurance policy renewal. Is that so? Well I have given this some serious thought, and I have decided, since this policy barely pays for anything anyway, that I am going to cancel it. I have already lost, all my stuff. And this policy turned out to be useless. So I won't be renewing it. And there you go. $400 back in my pocket. Well, so here's the thing. Did you register with FEMA? Well, yeah. They encouraged everyone to register with FEMA. Well, so here's the thing. Once FEMA has documented that you have flood damage from a federal disaster, you are required to carry flood insurance. Otherwise you are ineligible for future aid from FEMA, as well as for any government grants supplied to aid victims with rebuilding. But I didn't get any aid from FEMA because I have insurance. And I wouldn't need a grant of insurance actually paid for the damages. That is why I said hate the game, not the player, oh, and there is one more thing I have to tell you. What now? Your mandatory flood insurance rate has gone up from $400 to $500 because of your claim. This is such bullshit, bullshit I say. Don't flail your arms. It will provoke Seymour, you can give your credit card to my secretary on the way out. And I think that's about all we needed to discuss here today. Well, as you know, 
We here at the Pell Agency like to think we are your pals when it comes to insurance. Have I been your pal today? Fuck you, Lola. Fuck you and your miserable flesh-eating plant. That's about what I expected. Would you like some cheese and crackers to go with that wine? Well, I'm not the world's most masculine man but I know what I am, and I'm glad I'm a man and so is Lola, Lo, Lo, Lala, Lola, Lo, Lo, Lala, Lola. Yeah, like I've never heard that before. You're the tin man. I know, no heart. I get that a lot too. Gee, I can't imagine why. Aren't you hilarious? Just get out. What are you looking at? A girl has to make a living. Business sucks right now. But I just went to a seminar about how to manipulate clients to increase my sales. Tip 1 is to stay in charge of my accounts. To do that, I have to call my clients before they call me so I can control the conversation. Next, they recommended I do something called soft stalking, where I align myself with groups in the community, like charities, for example, and observe them for opportunities. I have to brand myself, introduce myself as my brand, and listen. One of the most important things that you will learn in selling is that listening wins sales. Listening is the most powerful personality characteristic you can develop as a salesperson. It's interesting, uh, most salespeople get a little bit nervous in a sales situation, and as a result, they talk too much and they talk too fast. Whereas really good salespeople slow down and they let the customer dominate the talking while they dominate the listening. And here's what we know, is the key to becoming an excellent listener in selling is to ask a lot of questions. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between asking questions and building trust, and the key to successful sales. The key is trust. Once people trust me, I can make them buy anything. I learned that all I have to do is give them information they think they want, and listen. Listening is like magic. People want to feel special. I have to stop selling insurance. If I can sell people on the idea that I am special, and more importantly, that they are special, they will come to me and ask me to sell them my products. I want to talk to you now about listening power. Uh, what we know is that listening is a form of what is called white magic. Listening entrances other people. It enchants other people. I wrote a book uh, recently called uh, The Power of Charm. And in The Power of Charm, I went into the subject in great depth, and it basically says this. If you want to be a charming person, then when you talk to people, ask them really interested questions and then listen and hang on every word that they say. Nod, smile, find the person absolutely fascinating. And that guy is a clever bastard. He said when you listen to a customer, it releases endorphins in their brain, which is like a happy drug. The more I listen and pretend to be fascinated by my customers, no matter how fucking boring, stupid, and tedious they are, the more they will like me and trust me. Once they like me and trust me, they will beg me to be the one who sells insurance to them. And anything I do that is just part of my job will be hailed with grace. Tony is already my customer, so I didn't bother with him. But I took this guy's advice. I soft-stalked some sandy groups and struck up a conversation with a homeowner. I pretended to be really interested in her problems and went back to her house with her so she could show me the devastation. I then called her and listened to her talk. I found out it's time for her to renew her policy. I invited her here today so I could, as a friend, give her some pointers on what to look for in a new policy. Mind you, I still have no control over the NFIP or how they determine their claims. But by the time I am done with this woman she will be begging me to sell her the renewal. That is, according to what they said at the seminar. Oh, that must be her now. Come in, Mrs. Crackenberry. So lovely to see you again. Please, have a seat. But take my seat. I know your back is bothering you from that terrible sofa bed. Oh Lola, you're such a kind-hearted person. How are you, today? You look so wonderful. Did you do something different with your hair? Actually, I think I need a haircut.
Why would you say that? I don't know. I guess because it has been a while. Well, I think it looks lovely. So tell me, how are you feeling? Has anything changed since we last spoke? Oh, you know. Blah 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 my husband blah 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 my sister blah 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 No kidding. And how did that make you feel? Well, upset. Because blah 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 the apartment blah 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 New York rising blah 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 blah. You really are fascinating to listen to. Your resiliency in this difficult situation is an inspiration. I am. It is. Yes, sure. Why don't you tell me more about what is going on with your house? Certainly. Blah 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 blah. Wow. And then what happened? Well, blah 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 blah. You are so humorous and optimistic. I try to be. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. I mean, what do you think? I'm flattered that you would ask me that, but I am more concerned with how you plan to handle that. What are you going to do? Blah 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 blah. My neighbor douchebag Joe. Blah 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 blah. Our it's Carlton. Blah 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 blah. Oh, of course. By the way. I took the liberty of mailing you the rules for the NFIP guidebook. I highlighted every section I thought was pertinent to your claim. That is so thoughtful of you. I know you are not my customer, but you are my friend. And friends look out for each other, right, friend? Oh, Lola, you have been so nice to me. Well, you're such a lovely woman, and you've been suffering through an exceedingly difficult time. I can't understand why everyone wouldn't want to be nice to you. We should go get manicures together sometime. You deserve a day to relax and unwind after all this horrible sandy stuff. Oh, that reminds me. I spoke to my friend. He is a contractor and he knows how to get claims paid. He was interested in taking a look at your house. Of course, there is no charge for him to stop by. We just want to help. I would help you myself. Like I do with all my clients, but that would be stepping on the toes of your current agent. I don't like to create conflict. How do you feel about the help you have received thus far? Oh my! Like I was saying, there seems to be no help at all. That is wonderful about your friend, the contractor. Just wonderful, Lola. I have to ask you a question. I need to renew my flood insurance. I was wondering if you would be my broker. Oh well, I don't know. I don't want to do anything that would ruin your trust in me as a friend. I try not to mix business and friendship. Although a girl does have to make a living. Well, of course you do. Please, I would be honored if you would be my broker. My current broker is an asshole. He hid from me for months after the storm. Oh my! What a terrible thing to do to such a wonderful person such as you. I would never do such a thing to one of my clients, of course. I know, I know. That is why I want you to be my broker. Please say you will. Well, how can I say no? You know, while we're doing that, we may as well review your homeowner policy, and also your auto insurance. I'll bet if your broker was that terrible that you don't have the proper insurance. My reviews are no charge, and you will see. For example, on your homeowner's policy, you could probably use more coverage. Why do I need more coverage? I already pay a lot of money for the coverage I have. I know, but if your policy were reviewed properly, you would be paying for the proper coverage, not the wrong kind of coverage. It will probably cost you a little more, but as you can see from what happened in this disaster, the right kind of coverage is very important. You know. I do not think of myself as a broker. I prefer the term agent. Being an agent means I represent someone the same way I would want someone to represent me. I don't just sell insurance like other brokers. I represent my clients when they have claims, and I make sure they have the proper insurance 
which enables me to fight on your behalf and ensure you are handsomely compensated in the event, God forbid, a disaster strikes. I will hold your hand through the whole process, like I do for all my clients. Because of my involvement, my clients have all been paid generously on their sandy claims. Like I said, I can't do much about your current situation because you are with another broker. But, if you empower me to fix his mistakes, I will make sure this never happens to you again. Oh, when you put it that way, honey, sure? You really sound like you know what you are talking about. I trust you. I will just let you advise me on everything. Fantastic, my friend. I have a client coming in shortly, but we should meet next week for lunch. I want to hear all about your niece and what the doctors are doing for her broken leg. You are welcome to bring some of your neighbors that you told me about. Maybe I can help them with some advice about their sandy damage as well. Oh, it was such a pleasure to see you, Lola. You be well. I know a great place for lunch next week. I will bring my insurance paperwork, and maybe I will bring some friends. You have been so helpful. Of course. I am happy to help. If not for me, who would be helping anyone? I don't see anyone else around doing what I'm doing. You've been through so much. I just want to give you a hug. Oh, I could use a hug. There, there, sweetie. We are going to get you home. You're doing great. Is it weird that I want to say God bless you, even though I'm a bit of an atheist? This is a very emotional time. Whatever you feel is the truth. I'm so glad you are my broker, I mean, agent, now. Goodbye, Lola. I will see you soon. Okay, friend. I will call you. Oh my God, that was so easy. Now I just have to wait for her to bring me all her friends and I will be golden. Woohoo. I rule. Sorry, Seymour, I didn't mean to flail my arms. You're such a good little attack plant. Hey, Tony. Hey, Mrs. Krakenberry, how are you doing? Good. Good, Tony. What are you up to? Oh, me? Well, I finally cornered my piece of shit insurance broker this morning. Now I am just killing time until I go meet up with Cough Angel for lunch. My broker is such a liar. And she is so rude to me. I can't stand her. When I tried to talk to her about my claim she took no responsibility at all. She was so nice when she, initially sold me the policy. I thought I could trust her. Tony, my broker was a piece of shit too. He is still hiding from me. I just switched brokers today. I should give you my new broker's information, she is wonderful. That's good to hear. Ultimately, though, I don't think it matters who your broker is. In the end we are all dealing with the NFIP and they just do whatever they want anyway. I think it matters. My new broker said she has helped all her clients get paid handsomely on their sandy claims. Are you sure? I just had to renew my flood policy. My agent told me not only is it mandatory that I carry flood insurance now, but the price went up $100, and she said there is nothing she can do about it. She also said she has no involvement after she sells someone a policy, and refused to help me with my claim. She said the decision to compensate is above her level and she kept saying hate the game, not the player. Tony, I really think you should talk to my agent. I will bet there is something she can do about that increase. She said people are always being sold the wrong kind of coverage. She even offered to review and adjust my homeowner's policy, free of charge. Wow. How did you hear about this person? I met her through a Sandy group. Oh. Wow, what was she doing there? Did her house flood? No, her office flooded though, but that's not why she was there. She said she just came to help the community. We became friends. I am confident she would never avoid me, the way our brokers have been doing if there was a flood. She is really different. She is an agent, not a broker. Agents manage things for people. You know, like a talent agent. Really, you should go talk to her. 
She is from the PAL agency, they strive to be our PALs when it comes to insurance. Her name is Lola. She really is lovely. But Lola from PAL is my agent now. Say what? Damn it, everyone on this flood scene is so full of crap. I can't believe I let that two-faced skanky lying bitch hug me.